Hey, what's going on students? Let's talk about rational exponents and radicals. So basically what we're doing in 7.5 is we're converting back and forth between radical form and exponential form. And here's how you do that. If you have anything to a root or to the nth root, basically you can rewrite that as that value, that a number, whatever this number is, you can take that to one over the n. One thing that helps is whatever number you have inside the radical sign, if you pretend there's a one in there, this n sneaks into the bottom and sticks to the bottom of that one. Um, and the same thing, if you already have an exponent on the inside, this number on the outside of the radical sign can only sneak in from the bottom. Hence why it's one over n and m over n. So my little analogy here is the only way that a root can get into the radical sign is through the ground. That should kind of make sense. A root goes to the ground, so the only way that it can get into the radical sign is through the ground. So this n sneaks in through the ground, sticks to the 1 by division. This n sneaks in through the ground, sticks to the m. That's it. That's just my analogy, and that's all you really have to do. You just go back and forth between the two forms when they ask you to write one or the other, and that's about it. So um, what do we got here? We have a, basically this is a square root. Um, by the way, friends, anytime you see a regular square root sign, there's technically an indivisible two right there. So you might want to write that down. So anyway, this two will sneak in and attach to this invisible one. So it's going to be 100 to the one half, which we should know is 10. That's just a quick example right there. So basically the number on the outside sneaks in through the bottom, sticks by division, and then you can either evaluate um, with some mental math or you can plug it into your calculator. So here we go. So if we have the third root of 125, okay, this three is gonna sneak into the bottom and it's gonna be 125 to the one third power. Now, if you remember 125 is five times five times five, so we, we break it down into three pieces and pick one. So the answer is five. There you go. You can use your calculator to evaluate as well. But we've done problems like this before, so you should be pretty good at that. Uh, this four sneaks in. So this becomes 16 to the one-fourth. If you break 16 down four times, it's two times two times two times two. Pick one. So it's two. All right. So if we rapid fire the rest of these. This three sneaks in. This becomes 27 to the one third, which turns into a three. This five sneaks in through the bottom. So this becomes a 32 to the one fifth. And that turns into a two. This three sneaks in through the bottom. You kind of get the idea by now. So it turns into a 64 to the one third. That turns into a four. <laughs> And here you go. Now, this may not always be there, friends. It may just be a regular square root of 36. Now, from there, <laughs> you don't really need much of a rewrite. We all know that the square root of 36 is 6. But if you want to follow the rules and rewrite it, it's kind of an extra step. It is 36 to the 1 half. And we've discussed in length that anything to the 1 half power is the same thing as a square root. So you get a 6. All right. So those are ones that are nice. What about ones that turn into decimals that are not perfect roots? Well, just rewrite them and then throw them in your calculator. So the thing about radical form is that radical form is pretty, but exponential form we use to actually calculate things. So if you wanted to find the sixth root of 300, you would actually rewrite it as 300 to the one-sixth, and then you can plug that in your calculator. So let's go ahead and go for that. Got a calculator ready to go right here. All right, here we go. So we go 300 to the power of 1 sixth is going to be to the nearest tenth, about 2.6. This 8 will round the 5 up. So I'm going to put this back. So we're going to get about 2.6. All right, so I'm going to write the next three out and then calculate them. I like to do all of the first steps first and the second step second. So, so the 5 is going to sneak in. Okay, what am I sticking this 5 to? There's an imaginary 1 here. There's an imaginary 1 here. There's an imaginary 1 here, okay? So this is going to be 400 to the 1 fifth. You can kind of see a pattern. This one's going to be 500 to the 1 fourth. And this is going to be 600 to the 1 third. OK, 
Okay, so again, radical form is kind of pretty, it's kind of organized, but exponential form is what we actually use to calculate things. All right, here we go. Let's calculate a bunch of these bad boys. Here we go. So we have 400, 400 to the power of 1 fifth. Now, 1 fifth is like 0 0.2, so if you want to change your fraction to a decimal and to evaluate it, there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to calculate the other two first here. Oops, go away. I need to hit return. There we go. New line of calculating, please. 500 to the first, sorry, to the first, to the first quarter or 1 fourth. Again, you could use a decimal, but I mean, it's not that hard to type it like you see it. 600 to the 1 third. And there we go. So we're going to have a 3.3. It's going to go right here. And then we're going to have a 4.7 and then an 8.4. So I'm going to move this to the side. Here we go. So this turned into a 3.3, I believe. Whoops, go away. This turned into about a 3.3, going to the tenths place. Oh, shoot, I forgot already. 4.7, there it is. So about a 4.7. And then I forgot the last one again already. 8.4, here we go. Good thing I kept the calculator open. All right, friends, that's about it in terms of rewriting going from radical to exponential. Basically, the only way that the root, the number on the outside of the radical sign, the only way that it can get into the radical sign is through the ground. So it sneaks in from the ground. You rewrite, simplify when you can. All right, see you in class.